Resilience Radio, introduce yourself, woman. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm honored. <laughs> My name is Devney Rain Royalty. I am 19 years old. I am Ponca Korean Cherokee descendant, and I'm a freelance and, well, freelance artist, illustrator, uh, exhibit artist, I guess would be the name for it. <laughs> well, for being a youngin', you've straight up been at art places. You're not just some kid on the street peddling her scribbles. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> I mean, I met you at an art museum in the inside. Yeah, that was, that made my whole year, honestly. <laughs> well, let's talk about your art and stuff because I am a huge fan. I feel that your perspective is fresh and interesting, but at the same time, like kind of dark and sad. And I love it. Yeah, I think you're the first person to actually like kind of catch on to that because a lot of people take, well, it's really interesting to get other people's perspectives on my art. And I think I do have a lot of like sad and dark art in the background that people don't see. And you're one of the very like few and first people to catch on to that. <laughs> well, your and I can't find it anywhere. And I cried yesterday. Your California fire drawing from a few oh, years ago. That fine. is one of my, I mean, I'm not sad about, I'm happy and not happy about fires, but I loved your piece because it was one of the darker, more painful images. Yeah. And as somebody that like cries for animals when there's a fire, I found that 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 piece of artwork in a weird way comforting. Like somebody gets it. Somebody gets the weirdness that I see when I close my eyes and there's fires going on. Yeah, that piece was really, uh, it took me a while to do it because a lot of people, um, usually online because I've spent a lot of time on Instagram way too much time on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> when I posted the sketch and the concept for that piece it got a ton of backlash and it kind of set me back for a while but I did it anyway and my mom was kind of like that's a really dark drawing she ended up liking it afterwards but I have a second piece to that as well that I haven't uploaded yet that I'm working on because I kind of want to re redo it it has a few uh, background scripts but that one was really like sentimental to me I kind of I got really emotional while drawing it because I remember the first time I saw the video um, there was just a herd of deer and with the fires going on they they all jumped off the cliff and I couldn't it was really hard to watch and that image came into my mind so that's where that one came from it was really hard <laughs> but art is supposed to reflect life and that is something that happened in our life yes. so how do we we're not how do you get it out of your head and out of your heart and, and into something else some people write poetry somebody write a sad deer song but you painted this image that i'm sorry you got a bad i i found it, it it's beautiful and i'm freaking out because i put it somewhere safe till i got a frame and it, it's too safe now i don't know where it is <laughs> <laughs> if you need another one I'll send you one bigger bigger <laughs> okay <laughs> but and but at the same time too you have flower people and you draw dragons and you do have a brighter side of your art but I guess what sticks out to, uh, to me is the fact that you can sit with that icky darkness not a lot of people can sit with that and a lot of people don't see my dark stuff. I usually choose to refrain from uploading it because uh, some, well, I don't really like draw gore and stuff, but I do have some of my darker stuff that kind of surrounds my more serious parts of my life, like my background and my childhood and stuff like that. And I don't know how people would sit with that. So I'm like, I'm always super shy about showing that artwork. Well, you should have a super secret website for those of us that aren't going to say anything mean to you. And that's what sucks about the internet too. Everybody's got a bleep an opinion. Yeah, that's true. And I I'm posted, also pretty sweet. oh, sorry. I sing happy birthday to SDP and I'm just waiting for like all the negative comments to like roll in, you know? <laughs> yeah, people are judgmental. Uh, I'm all for free speech, but some people kind of take advantage of that, I think, and they really use it for negativity. 
which is something I have a hard time with because I'm really like justice kind of person. So yes. And if you don't like something, scroll on. Like, why yeah. stop and take time out of your day to be a jerk? Like, ugh, I don't have time to be a jerk <laughs> online. I do it to your face like a normal person. Exactly. Who has time to scroll all day and comment? Like, <laughs> I mean, if I, if I told every person online I thought they were an idiot, I would never get anything done. So. <laughs> um. Have you always been a scribbler, scrabbler, drawer, artistic person, or is this like a late life epiphany? No, I have. Um, I started when I was three that I know of, and my mom always shows people the embarrassing photos. Yay. Um, <laughs> I used to, she got me these, the Crayola washable markers, and it was chaos. I still have all the artwork too, but when I turned six is kind of when it really bursted, I think because my dad was also an artist. He was a tattoo artist as well. I wish I had his work, but he didn't really like draw on paper. He just kind of draw something and throw it away. And I aspire to be able to draw feathers the way he did, but um, he's the one who got me to start drawing more buffalo skulls and stuff like that. So when I was six years old, it just, I was like, I want to do this more. And <laughs> that was like the beginning of it. <laughs> but it's awesome too, that you're in an environment that nurtures art. Most yeah. parents like, you got to be a lawyer or a dentist or whatever. And I definitely had that uh, with the rest of my family. Um, I'd say my mom and my dad were the first two to only support me at the time. My granny and like other family members do now. But back then, uh, most people told my mom to like, I, like she was enabling a really bad behavior drawing all the time. And <laughs> Um, I did go to preschool and like school early on, but it didn't work out for a lot of reasons because um, other than being an artist, there was just a lot of backlash with that, even in a preschool. And it was insane. And when I turned six, uh, my mom started homeschooling me and we went homeless at that time as well. So we were homeless for three years from six years old to nine years old. And that was kind of my art. That's kind of how I expanded, I think. So well, it's how you coped. It's how your brain processed or spent time. There's anxiety in that stress. There you is. have to get it out somehow. So your little nine-year-old brain was like, guess what? I'm an artist now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I do, as you know, I do a lot of character art and dragons because that's how I make a living most of the time to be able to get art supplies and pay bills and stuff. That was... Um, that was scary when I started finally uploading my indigenous stuff online, because when you start posting, people get used to a certain genre. Yeah. And when you start doing new stuff, people are like, mm, I, don't, I don't know if I like that. And most of the backlash kind of went from the way I look, which I, I know how I look, but <laughs> people online have a very large perspective on that. And they have a bit, really strong opinion about being blonde hair and blue eyed and light skinned. <laughs> Which is so weird because natives are like, we don't want people to be racist against us. And then there's natives racist against each other, which is stupid. I know this is radio, but I think you're adorable. So don't trip chocolate chip. I got you. Thank you. <laughs> but um, no, so here you have a passion and a drive inside you. And then you get backlash from family, backlash from the internet, backlash from the internet again, and then backlash <laughs> for not being brown enough. Like, how do you even keep going? Art. <laughs> I do have friends. Um, She's so like, all, I do have friends. No, I'm kidding. But no, <laughs> I have very few, like a small friend base on Instagram. Uh, I started online way too young. I was 11. My granny got her first uh, phone and she just gave it to me. And I didn't know what Instagram was. She's like, it's for people that do what you do. And I was like, awesome. So I <laughs> Oh, I got yeah. on there way too young <laughs> and that was the beginning of my art stuff and I didn't play I didn't grow up playing games and stuff and I didn't really watch movies I wasn't really I, I was a weird kid so on my you Instagram, still are honey don't worry about it yeah so when I was on Instagram I was like hey there's other stuff I can draw and I got into I really got into Minecraft when I was younger but I didn't play it I just drew it and that kind of started my whole online art career. Interesting. Uh, Interesting. I did do 
I did do indigenous art, but I never uploaded it. And I still have all those drawings too, but I was too nervous back then to upload that kind of stuff. I didn't know what people would do. And it's probably good because back then I would not have been able to handle the backlash. Now I'm more like, expect it. You just kind of wait for it. Well, being <laughs> engine is almost cool again. So <laughs> it's almost, it's almost hip. <laughs> Some style. Yes, but where, how, what, who, where? Now, I met you at the Crocker Art Museum, and then I saw you posting a something else about another run. Please yeah. break it down, because without actually going to an art museum, how do you experience this art thingy? So, um, it started when I was 14 um, at the Mighty Museum, and my mom was going to the Mighty Museum, and she used to get soap there. And she was like, you got to come see the art gallery and the trail and stuff because you haven't gone there. And I was like, that sounds cool. And we met uh, the art director there named Sigrid Benson. And Sigrid! Yeah, Sigrid. She was like, hey, do you, have, do you know any artists or like young artists we're trying to do for an art gallery? My mom told me about it and I almost didn't do it because I, I get really nervous with like stage fright and I'm camera shy and things like that. And then my mom introduced me to her and I was like, okay, I can come up with something. And because Sigurd was talking to me about uh, how people don't acknowledge the Maidu and the Miwok and the Wintu and all of the California tribes. And it, it kind of made me upset. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to draw those tribes for the first time because uh, I grew up on this land and it's kind of feels like my job to honor them. So I came up with my first drawing I can't remember the name of it because my mom named it. I was not good at naming my art back then. And I was like, what do I name this? I was like, I based it off of the Sacramento Pow What do I name it? And she's like, <laughs> so. Sacramento Pow <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing I grew up going to. So that was another inspiration. And uh, so I, I did that first exhibit. And Sigurd told me I didn't know anything about art insurance and like selling it and stuff. And I was like, okay. And it ended up selling and I couldn't believe it at 14. And uh, so people were like, oh, are you gonna do it again to sell art? And I was like, no, but I wanna do it again. <laughs> so the uh, second gallery I had at the Miami Museum was Voice and I did my piece. Uh, it was based off of the Lakota Ways calendar. Um, that one is really, it had, there's a lot going on in it. If I could fix a few things, I would definitely do it. Um, and then my third one was the plant people and that's where the Ina sunflower kachinas came into creation and they wanted us to do a plant theme drawing obviously based off of the plant people and uh, I was raised with kachinas and stuff like that and I've always been really fascinated by them I, I love kachinas but I'm not Hopi myself. So I've always been, I know how serious and how sacred they are. So I was like, I feel like this is a bad idea, but I really want to, I have an idea in my mind. And I tried to draw some of the corn kachinas and the existing ones. I couldn't do it at the time. And uh, I, I remember it was really cheesy. I kind of like took a nap on accident and I had this weird dream with a sunflower. And I was like, that's it. I'm doing a sunflower. Oh, oh, the ancestors told you what to do. <laughs> so I, I ended up uh, sketching the concept for it. And it was really funny because I wanted to get other people's opinion. And one of the artists there, um, or I think, I think she was one of the artists. Uh, she, we never got to like introduce each other. We just have talked to each other. It's like these encounters that we have. Um, I went to show Sigrid and her and Sigrid was like oh that's a cool idea and the artist was got, like don't don't show people your concepts and I was like okay won't do that next time and then I did it next time but the funny <laughs> thing the funny thing about it was uh because they're the whole their whole arm is based off of like a stem like a sunflower stem and so they have these leaves that that hang down but as a sketch everyone thought it was like a pray, praying mantis kind of thing. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, no, okay, you'll get, you'll get the idea. When I, when I get the sketch done, you'll, you'll get the idea. So there wasn't a lot of optimism at first. Sigrid was the only one that was like, that's a cool idea. And I was like, thank you. That's, that's all I need. That, that was my confidence drive right there. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> but 
to me, that wasn't the first thing that caught my eye. Yeah, which is nice because that's usually what catches everyone's eye. No, it was the face and the hair and the, and the galaxy behind it. Like, you know, uh, I don't know. See, my pa's <laughs> an artist. You know, I'm an artist, but I'm very impatient. So <laughs> I guess I look at things trying to understand what the artist wants to say. Yeah. So faces are important. Backgrounds are important. You know, things in the on the ground in the corner are important. The faces to me were really important because they didn't look completely like that when I had that dream. But I was like, the face, the first concept I came up with looked a little too mean to me. And they still kind of have, there is people that think that they look hostile. They're not supposed to look hostile. They're just supposed to look like sacred and like they're there. But so that was, that was kind of funny. And uh, people always ask me, the first thing usually other than the arms is what are the face patterns on their mask? And I don't usually call it a mask. Most people call it a mask. I, to me, I believe that's just their head. Yeah. Like, their design, their facial design. And I don't, uh, because people, I think, uh, let me see. I think it was at the Crocker. I can't remember. I think it was at the Crocker before I met you. Someone asked me what the facial paint was, and I was like, well, to me, it's not paint, but I try to explain to them what a medicine wheel, sorry, what a medicine wheel is and the colors. And they're like, well, I think you should change the colors. I'm like, I'm not going to change the colors. (laughs) Who does that, though? Who walks up to an artist and says, I like your stuff, but you should change it? (laughs) A lot, especially at the Blue Line Gallery. That gallery was trippy. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) No, it's fine. I wasn't the only one that got interrogated anyway. (laughs) So here's my honest opinion on, and people, where can people go see what I'm about to talk about? Like where's the best, because I'm going to go off on these, um, these sacred um, nature kachinas, but where can people look at them so they know what I'm, I'm getting at? Uh, Most likely just my Facebook, Garlic Garlation. (laughs) I will explain the name. (laughs) Um, I have to upload onto my Instagram soon, but most of my social media has the same name, which is 22love126 under dash artist. That's my YouTube, that's my Instagram, Artfall, DeviantArt, et cetera. So. We're all old people, you guys, listening audience. She is 19 years old and she just did a whole list of things. I have no, like it sounded like (laughs) I was listening to a foreign language. Like. So we're just going to have her give us the links and we're going to post them on something. So. All right. I can do that. <laughs> Jeezy peace. I, I heard the word Instagram and then a bunch of underscores. So your Kachinas, if anything looks angry to me, I'm of the perspective that right now she has mother nature has the right to be a little irritated. So if mother nature isn't have a nice glowing, huggy, cheery, chip, chip face, I understand. And to me, those faces, like they do on a lot of different indigenous dolls, like really don't have a face or very little detail of that face because they are supposed to not be of this world, right? So eyes, nose, mouth, that's a human thing, not necessarily a sacred being thing. So I get it and I dig it (laughs) to me. Um, For me, I'm good. I think the number one criticism I've gotten because I don't want them to look too much like a person. I've never wanted them to kind of scream a specific gender, even though they are supposed to be motherly and caring. And I can't tell you how many comments I've gotten that I should give them like breasts. I have gotten so many. What has a corn plant had boobs? (laughs) I've gotten so many. And the second you put boobs on it, somebody's going to start sexualizing it. So I think you're perfect. Thank you. They're A cups. They're acorns. (laughs) Ah, A cup corn. So um, my recent gallery at the Crocker Museum, again, downtown Sacramento, um, we had our first run, Multiple Horizons, and right now we're having Tribal Perspectives. We ended up having a second run because the first one went pretty well. So we were like, we're trying to bring more awareness unfortunately because i i write way too long descriptions none of my descriptions were uploaded on there so i've gotten 
a lot more questions. Yeah, you <laughs> leave descriptions like I leave voicemails. Okay. <laughs> So with this one, I tried to be a little more, since people kept complaining about the face and I'm not going to change the face. I tried to like, I don't know if you can tell, I tried to like- That's my favorite one! Is it? Yes, that is my favorite one. I love that one. I'll because it has, your, it has your elements of dark, but there's that deep caring. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yes, it's rainy. Yes, it's gloomy. But here we are being protected and cared for by this earth of ours. So this I love no. I love this that. was my favorite one to do, and this was the, the least liked one, so I was a little sad. Shut so. up! <laughs> People, uh, their favorite was uh, honoring. The, the bright one? Yeah, see, I knew what squares. <laughs> You're just a bunch of squares out there. <laughs> squares. Yes, uh, selflessness was my most... Uh, I cared a lot about this one when I worked on it. Um, so... Is selflessness the rain one? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, see that? <laughs> you. There's a little, I realize I probably should have highlighted more. Most people don't see there's a little mockingbird too on the. On the deer <laughs> hen, you guys. We got to post links because I, whatever her love, 22 underscore dash and freaking emoji, whatever, I don't even know. <laughs> so now you have to tell us garlic. Galatian, explain okay. it because I just okay. imagine you with like stinky kisses girl what's going on <laughs> okay so um I never wanted Facebook but I got Me it because, either. uh because every time I went to the exhibits people were like I don't have Instagram so you're you're screwed and I'm like okay but I had to get a new phone because mine was almost six years old and half working and became a personal uh oven range because of how hot it got so I ended up getting my new phone <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll get Facebook. And so I went to my friend's house and I was like, guys, help me set this up. And uh, I go and put my name in the Facebook and they're like, that's not a real name. So I, I contacted Facebook. I felt so, so important having to contact Facebook. And I was like, how do I verify my name? Cause, and they're like, Devney Rain Royalties doesn't sound like a real name. I'm like, what do you want? My birth certificate? They do. So, <laughs> I kept putting in different stuff to go with my name. And I was like, and they wouldn't let me do the 22 of 126 artist. So I got really upset. And I was like, oh, I bet it would accept this. And it did. I put in garlic arletion as a joke because <laughs> my yeah. friends and I online have this. Um, it's kind of like a personal comic thing we have. And there's a character called Galax the Guardian so the joke was garlic garlation and when it saved I haven't been able to change it <laughs> there you go okay so do your I'm trying to find your Instagram so do your because garlic galation didn't come up so do it like you're talking to an 89 year old so two two l o v e one two six uh underscore a r T I S T. I should have the same profile picture on almost everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So there you go. P I'll yeah. post the thing. Like that was, that was painful. <laughs> it's my new account. I had an old one and people were like, why'd you make a new one? You had 4,000 followers because they're all Minecrafters and they don't want to see my stuff. So I made a new account. And that stinks too, you know, as an indigenous broadcaster, I don't just run around collecting acorns and playing with feathers. I'm also a huge metalhead. So it's <laughs> weird that people accept or only want to see certain parts of you that meet their <laughs> preconceived notion of you, right? Yeah. So and you're, you're only allowed to paint arrows, not drag. How dare you add a dragon? Yeah, ex exactly. And so here's another funny thing, because I my account has had many genres, but for some reason, the indigenous one and the Native American stuff, that that is just not the genre anyone wants. Um, when I was 13, um, so I had a role model. Uh, his name is Jared Leto, and he has a band called 30 Seconds to Mars, and it's my favorite band. I've been a fan also since I've been drawing. And I ended up meeting him on the side of the road at my first concert, 
And uh, this, I talk about this story a lot because it, it's a big deal to me. And it kind of started off my gallery stuff because I had a gallery a year after. And to me, it's really important. Um, so basically for my birthday, my granny got me these tickets and I was like, oh yeah, I get to sit on the lawn at a concert and watch my favorite band. And it was in Marysville. And uh, a lot of people don't know this because I don't talk about it all the time. My dad committed suicide when I was nine. So I surround a lot of my art around emotions and like stuff like that. And my dad, the last place I saw him was in Marysville. Um, and we used to watch the stars and look at the stars and stuff. And that was the last time I saw him. And I remember it vividly because he, he dent the, uh, the hood of the car because we we're sitting there and he moved. <laughs> so my mom was driving and she, uh, she has a photographic memory. So she ended up remembering where to go. And I saw this dude with like a pirate hat. I was completely wrong. And it ended up being him and my mom pulled over and she like threw me out of the car and she's like, go say hi. And I was like, okay. Hi. And um, I ended up meeting him and he was riding his bike. And I realized when I was standing there, it was the exact street that I last saw my dad. So I was really, I like wasn't there. And I wasn't in like the crazed uh, fangirl moment that I was meeting my my role model. There was a red tail hawk and I actually drew this and I want to make a bigger drawing of it at some point. And Jared was kind of like, he kind of like did this. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, there's a, there's a hawk up there. <laughs> um, he ended up putting us in the VIP, which I didn't know what that was. And it was a really awesome concert. And after that, uh, before we left, I got to talk to him behind stage and uh, behind the stage. And he told me about Copic markers because he asked me what I wanted to be. And I was like, I want to be an artist. That's, that's about. But I also told him I wanted to be a firefighter because I did. Uh, my whole life, I wanted to be a tattoo artist and a firefighter. It was this dream I had for my whole life. And uh, he just told me that don't be a firefighter. And uh, I was like, okay. <laughs> that was Every easy. Yeah, everyone my whole life was like, don't be a firefighter. And I'm like, I'm going to be one. And he told me not to be. And I was like, okay. Because I took it as a sign for, I was like, maybe my dad doesn't want me to be a firefighter, which kind of was good because I ended up getting diagnosed with something. So I wouldn't be able to be one anyway. So I'm glad I stuck with the art. But well, it was confirmation from an artist that you like that you can be an artist. Exactly. And then he told me mediums to use. And I was like, I want to try that. <laughs> um, wow. my granny oh, go ahead. I just said, wow, like that's bleeping <laughs> awesome. Like what grandma gives you concert tickets? It turns into VIP. Like I've only yeah. got good seats by being skanky. So I'm jealous. <laughs> they were really cheap. They were like really uh, sad tickets and they ended up turning into uh, amazing um, but when my granny saw the price of the Copex and I was like, these are what he told me to use, she was like, now. And then I ended up just saving a lot. And because uh, a pack of six markers is like $50. So it took me a long time wow. to get markers, but they're refillable. So that's why. And you can refill them and use them and make your own colors. And uh, all my stuff is markers. I've never painted in my life, <laughs> but I, I still can call them paintings, but because they kind of are, you blend a lot. Well, there's ink involved, right? Yeah, yeah. there is. <laughs> Call them what you want. But that's what I love about you is that you're not sticking yourself into one thing or forcing yourself to be one type of artist. Like you're just doing it yeah. in your way. <laughs> and I think it's stupid that people don't get it. But I, again, I can't yell at everybody. Yeah. I <laughs> But I'm glad, I'm glad that, uh, that there are people out there who are profoundly affected by what you do like I am. Like, people do get it. They do get it. It's people like you that make all the backlash worth it. <laughs> well, if you want, you can send me a list, and I will not troll them on the internet. I'll troll them in person. <laughs> oh, it's it's great. I think this year kind of take took the award for like best comments because um, I ended up getting this comment on Facebook and uh, from this lady and I don't know how political issues got brought up with my Ina Sunflower Kachinas, but she was upset that this drawing in particular, my Mitake Oyasin. 
love it was discriminating against democratic colors and i commented <laughs> innocently and naively and i asked her what what she meant because it was for earth day which is my birthday so uh, it's important to me and she got she made this beware post to not commission me because I didn't hand sanitize my drawings and I was spreading COVID, which I tried to make clear because I do this anyway. When I laminate my commissions, I have to vinegar them. So because the laminating is a glare and I clean them off the really thick laminating pouches. I don't hand, hand sanitize my drawings. I'll say that now. Never have. That'll ruin it. That'll. I don't even it. know how you would do that. Like I didn't. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> and a few of my friends commented and they were like, you can't hand sanitize a drawing and I don't think she's spreading anything. I haven't even taken really any commissions because of it, especially with the shipping fees. And then the next day I woke up to my Instagram, my Facebook just overrun with Proud Boys. And um, someone made a hate account um, and ended up editing my Ina Sunflower Kachina's and putting race traitor all over them. So I was like, <laughs> what? The? Oh my God. <laughs> so that was an experience. That was a new one for me. Um, they got taken down because they did some, um, they broke a few guidelines to say the least. Uh, <laughs> so that was great. <laughs> is it up on your Facebook? Cause I remember seeing it. Where is it? Uh, I took it down actually. Facebook asked Why? me to take it down. <laughs> Wait, uh, Wait, hold on. Is- so you but- get so you get an idiot <laughs> that comes to some dumb old conclusions and then gets her friends involved. They her steal son. your art, edit it, make things that are untrue, but you're the one that can't put up the art. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the drawing itself should still be on there. I had to take down the beware as well. Okay. Um, it should be, it's also on the Shingle Springs administration or no, the Shingle Springs band of me walk Indians, um, Facebook group. Cause it was for them. Cause, uh, Sigrid and Jackie and me were talking and, uh, earth day is my birthday. So they were like, you want to do a drawing for that? And I was like, heck yeah, I do. So <laughs> So Sorry, excited. I'm trying to snoop your art. I'm looking for your thingy. I'm very upset because I remember seeing that and loving it. And it disappeared. I know it should be. Oh, I don't have Facebook on my tablet. Dang it. So what is this website? Which one? Your two two love one two six artist website. Uh the one in my bio. Yeah. So that's my card co, which is just a it's a site that links every account that I have. So if you want to link that, that'll work just fine. It has everything I, I use on there, including my email. Okay. Not my no, phone but- number. I've learned my lesson with that. Hear you. So how can we get you out of any apprehension and get a ginormous catalog of your art somewhere? Like, how can I support you slash secretly yell at you about doing that? Uh, I'd love to, (laughs) I'd be honored to, um, if I ever got the opportunity, I'd be like ecstatic. Can we Um, just upload all your stuff on the interwebs? Like I want to see the all of it. Yeah, I need to, I know I do need to upload. I want to spam my Instagram and just get everything on there. Do it. Um, (laughs) You really should. I can also send you all the unwatermarked versions if you'd like. I have to watermark them just because of theft, but I can send you personally if you want. I want to see. I love it. I'm a huge fan. Like, I've been quietly just watching you from afar. Like, I don't know. Is she going to freak out? This girl's like, can I talk to you about your drawings on the radio? Because I didn't even know if you knew what a radio was. I grew up listening to your radio. Like, I can't even tell you what a big deal this is to me <laughs> okay good because it's a big deal to me too and especially for you being such a youngin and having such a clear vision and being good at something this coming from an old lady that's a rarity and that's awesome <laughs> I most up- of us just spend our 20s like oh, what's going on who am I you know <laughs> giant waste of time 
<laughs> I grew up with a lot of like the old stuff. So even new stuff is like new to me, even though I still have to help my mom and my granny and stuff, which is perfectly fine. But I'm not like super hip to all the like AirPods stuff like that. I've <laughs> I'm pretty basic with technology. I'm too I cheap to be hip. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> So. dude buying a phone when i had to get this new one it was like buying a car i was there for four hours signing paperwork I was well, like, and then you don't even want to touch it or use it because <laughs> heaven forbid you know i can't have nice things no if it's not made out of like sticks and i don't know <laughs> mud i'm gonna break it <laughs> um so you talk about art supplies and things like that. I like to imagine that there's a millionaire in a hammock listening to my program and wanting to help. So can people just send you money for art supplies or is there, you know what I'm saying? Is there a general fund? Um, I've never asked for money. Probably. Well, I'm asking for you. <laughs> I, my PayPal link is on my account, usually just for my commissioners, but it, it, it is on there on my card co. Um, that's about it. I think that's on there. So but. somebody wanted to support a young artist, they could just send 20 bucks for some marker inks or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or some canvases or something, whatever. But yeah, people can support what you're doing because I get it. This crap is expensive. So I don't like painting because you just spend a bunch of money on a canvas and then you screw it up like the first three brushes. So. And then like for me, I think because my I try to be... I don't know. I'm I'm very like giving with art, so I usually don't ask for money as well. I don't know if that's a mistake, but I I love doing it and making it because it's like it's a part of me. So I'm like, <laughs> that's probably why I have to save up so much for inks, but that's okay. <laughs> well, and generous, we are generous people by nature. I believe. I know some of us yeah. are more wounded than other, but I think a lot of us really understand the joy in giving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm, you guys, this is so super rude. Like I'm an interview staring at my phone. No, it was so fine. It was on, I'm just trying to understand the world, you guys. <laughs> so on your 22love126 underscore artist, so stupid. <laughs> There's nothing about you. This is nothing about you. It's like how It has symbolism. Get? It has its, its purpose. <laughs> None of us get it. Okay, but right here on that link on your Instagram, if you hit PayPal, you can send you money <laughs> or card co. I'm going to try. It's linked to my wrong thing, but I'm going to send you some ink money. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. I just. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It's your. I'm so mad that Facebook tells me birthdays like three days afterwards. I'm mailing you this. Stop it. Know, you I'm hush. It. I'm mailing you it. No. Well, you don't have to. I just really wanted to get, and, and it's hard to talk about art on air. That's why I keep trying to figure out all your interwebs. So people, and, and you know, and I'll post all your links and things, but I really feel like your interwebs don't. Yeah, I know. I know. Make... The person that I'm talking to and the art that I've seen, and I'm not saying that negatively. I'm just no, saying I... like, I want more. I know. I have a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, so a lot of my art has a lot of like stories to it and I need to upload more of those stories and I'm working on more spirits and kachinas, which I can show you. You can be the first person to see the one I'm working on at the yes, moment, yes, but it's please. only line art. So it's really hard to tell. Yes. See, um, no. F oh yes. This is Turkey tail. I'm really excited to work on him and there's going to be a time lapse for my YouTube. So that's exciting. Is that a salamander? Is that Which a newt? One? What's he holding? Oh, what do you, so here's what's kind of funny. Um, yeah. People, I'm trying to kind of combine, again, my artwork, because uh, once again, people think my art can be too hostile at some point. So I'm making- Oh, harder. <laughs> I'm making the little spirits look really, like, cute or trying to. So they're going to be like little spirits that are- all over the place but then we also have i'm working on a comic um love it love it this is headdress uh it's gonna be a mini comic i'm working on i'm trying to practice my writing skills ain't nothing fluffy about that one <laughs> 
his personalities a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to be a f- like it. I know. And even to in my realm, you can't ne- you can't always be yourself because you have to please an audience, right? Yeah, and we can't please everyone at the same you time. You can't please everyone, but you can in this. So I'm just letting you know that if you want to go a little harder and, and scurrier, I'm okay with that. I support you. Thank you. Get I, them I goals plan, out. I do plan to do a few more, actually, um, darker ones. I have a few other... I don't know if they'll be Kachinas. They might just be spirits. Um, I'm getting, I don't, like I said, I'm, I'm more used to the backlash now than I was like when I was younger. Cause I knew it was going to happen when I was younger, but I didn't really have the heart to handle it yet. Now I'm kind of like used to it. So I'm, um, I'm still keeping the Ina Sunflower Kachinas cause to my heart they're Kachinas, but there's people that are like, you don't have a right to call them Kachinas. So I'm trying to like make a separate category from them. But I also See, don't want again. To- okay. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. So having the right as an indigenous person to express themselves, you don't have the right to do like, it's just stop people scroll on. And at the same time, I do want to, cause I want to respect the tribes at the same times and, and their, and how sacred Kachinas are, but they're sacred to me too. I've you got there. given a vision. Okay. And your stress nap, you got a stress nap vision. To me, that's like the most permission you can get. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm assuming it was a stress nap. I, I have to do those too, where everything's just all yeah. blah. And you're like, oh. Yeah, I was. <laughs> that's, that's what happens with a lot of them. Um, a lot of my newer ones are based off of dreams and nightmares. I don't post the nightmare ones, but I will post some of the dream ones. I do have a few concepts I can show you because these are going to be new drawings as well. I've been a part of a work, a writing and art workshop with America Meredith. So the first American art magazine, we're just practicing writing though, because a lot of artists are too afraid to write for their pieces or they don't want to write. As for me, I write too long of descriptions, so I've been excited about this. Um, Well, during one of the workshops, uh, I wasn't distracted but we have a red tail hawk that keeps coming on our porch and it gave me like this idea. So if I can find him real quick, I can show you a few concepts that I'm gonna be working on. So, okay, here he is. I hopefully you can see it. So he's kind of, let me see. Yes, oh, 100% yes. And uh, what I'm excited about, though, is not even just his design. Uh, He's going to have a big birdhouse, and it's going to be based off of uh, Korean Cherokee designs. I love it. And then the last part, I think. So you might like this one since you like Deer Fire. I've been working on. Yes, that is gorgeous. (laughs) Thank you. And then the last one I'm trying, I've been super stuck on a design i'm trying to make awareness on my instagram account about the missing and murdered indigenous women because on instagram that's like unknown facebook you do see it and like you hear about it but on instagram people are like what and i can't tell you how many people have said well abductions are really rare no they're not (laughs) happening every day so this is one i'm trying to work on it's kind of hard to tell but i know i see the feet moving I see the crown. I see the dancing. Well, that's that's what I'm working on as well. So I'm excited about that one. And nervous, but excited. <laughs> well, the 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 crappiest, the hardest, but best advice my grandpa said was just be yourself. And that like when somebody says that, you're like, uh, I'm like that's the worst thing you ever want to do ever. <laughs> And then going through that fear of being yourself and then seeing the benefit of it, you know, but keep being yourself and keep taking those stress naps. I'm with you. (laughs) Thank you. And maybe too, I mean, maybe if people want to, or since you are so multifaceted, maybe you set up your three different kind of categories, you know, your, your comic books, your Minecraft stuff. 
you know, your daydreams and then your nightmares. Yeah. The nightmare so, stuff, I think I will do a little bit more of. Um, my more recent piece for the Crocker, again, Multiple Horizons, that's still going on. If people want to go look that up, there's a lot of amazing indigenous. Yeah, artists. okay. Multiple Horizons. Is it on the Crocker Art Museum website? Yes, it is. Okay, I'll find and, that link too. And it links already, the Multiple Horizons will link the second one on its own, luckily. So you just, it, it shows whoever's looking. There's a ton of artists in that one. Um, Nocturnal, I think, was probably the most personal piece I've ever done for an art exhibit. And it's not, it doesn't look as serious as like Deer Fire or anything, but it was really strange to work on because it was based off of me in like Sacramento and I've only lived here in Sacramento, California and I can't really see myself going anywhere else. So I, I kind of like drew my experiences and how I saw things growing up and kind of showing my perspective a bit, which is why Deer Fire's in it as well. But <laughs> that piece was different. Um, it was kind of funny because the deadline was kind of, we didn't know if we we're gonna have the exhibit Mm -hmm. so no one really had anything and we we're supposed to have newer stuff but we ended up people ended up putting older stuff because no one could get stuff done in time as for me I was panicking and got it done in three days I started and I was just recording I pulled three wow. all-nighters I had like 15 hours of sleep in three days because I was like no I gotta get this done so <laughs> you that's get used dedication to <laughs> it really is <laughs> So that was, and it's, I think it's, yeah, it's nine by 12. So it wasn't as big as um, some of my other ones, but with all the stuff I slapped in on it. <laughs> that that, I'm just, I am tickled. So Crocker Art Museum, we can link you there. We can link, we just got to clean up your social. Like you are, most people pretend to be cool on the internet and they suck right? In person. But you're the opposite. Your internet kind of sucks, but here you are this like incredibly talented, amazing, sweet, just wonderful person. I mean, you got to figure, I'm not, I didn't mean to say your internet sucked. <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't accurately portray the awesome woman that I just talked to. Well, I think uh, a part of the problem is, um, don't care. <laughs> I think a part of the problem why a lot of people can't find me is a lot of these art exhibits spell my name wrong. Um, my, uh, my name is spelled D-E-V-A-N-E-Y. Everyone forgets the E-Y and just puts Y. So you can look me up if you spell my name wrong. <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> no, but we'll, we'll make a post on Resilience Radio and my Facebook with all your properly linked links, including Crocker Art, so people can get a glimpse and understand all the things we're describing on radio. You know, and I'm like, hold up a painting. Are you guys, this is great. You should see it. And they're, <laughs> they're going, what? you know, I can just describe what it feels like. On camera. Uh, no, cause you're getting your d nasty COVID hands all over it. Cause you have to spray sanitizer on it. <laughs> and blend. I can't even imagine what it would look like if you put hand sanitizer on the ink. No, you yeah. shouldn't. You should make that person a republican painting like aren't they the are they the donkey or the elephant <laughs> right give her one and then like make it perfect and beautiful and then just spray a bunch of sanitizer on it just gonna make like a what are the videos on youtube there's like the art asmr do that with the hand sanitizer yeah just <laughs> here you go happy now <laughs> so far our only innocent Kachina right now is this one she hasn't got any backlash yet no and she's beautiful and calming thank you but and, but like I said I, I catch the universe when I look at her I catch uh, you know so many other things when I look at her but you know art is supposed to kind of you got to feel something yeah and, and you do that there's obvi I obviously have emotional reactions <laughs> maybe over emotional reactions to what you do. And I think the stories are important because you're not just painting a thing. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're not like just here's yeah. art. Oops, sorry. You know, you're not just saying there's an art, you are sharing a story from an indigenous perspective amongst that thing. 
So in a weird way, you have a little bit extra responsibility to articulate the culture reflected in this idea. I don't know. No, that, that, that's how it feels though, too. Cause it's not just like, I'm going to draw. This Here's a cat. Picture. Yeah. I'm going to draw this picture and I'm going to post it just because I drew it. Cause for me, there's a lot of emotion and feeling done while working on these pieces and they're really sentimental to me. Sometimes I miss the ones that I don't have, but at the same time, I'm glad they went to someone who also shares the same like connection with them. I want people to be able to have some sort of like connection or like relation to them. But at the same time, I like to focus on the younger kids as well. Cause art exhibits are really amazing. But at the same time, you see all these kids and to them, they're just watching a bunch of people talk and they have to sit down and yes. do stuff. And I want them to be able to like, be able to feel like they can touch it or make something and I've drawn with kids before I've uh taken some sketchbooks at some art galleries and was able to sit down with some random kids there and be like hey you want to draw some go ahead so that was fun well in the the new series the colors are more bright and inviting yeah and I think a little kid would love those purples and greens and That one, uh, I never planned to make a non-sunflower based one. So Iris was kind of a new, another dream based one, but. Iris is. I think uh, whatever you're dreaming, (laughs) keep doing, like go back to bed. That's what I'm gonna tell you, go back to sleep, keep dreaming. (laughs) Um, So her story I have yet to develop. It's funny because the Ina sunflower kachinas have more story, but they have no names. The children have no names. I haven't been able to figure that out. Um, but the new ones don't have names, uh, or they do have names and have less story, if that makes sense. <laughs> but sometimes too, when you give a name, if there is no name and it's, if it's in that, and that child represents all children. Yeah. In a way you're, you're, everybody's involved because it could be any child. So when you give something a name, sometimes it separates. Yeah you from that store I don't know I'm rambling I'm just an old lady no that makes sense and it kind of goes along with the designs too I've tried to focus so it can go to different tribes as well I try not to focus on one tribe one design and that kind of goes with the uh the regalia and what they wear as well and and also because they're kids I try I that was kind of gave me more flexibility with the designs because I realized a while back uh, I did a drawing for the Santa Fe Art Festi- Film Festival, and uh, mm-hmm. I had to do, it was supposed to be for all the kids and generations, and I drew a bunch of babies, and I realized it's a bad idea, because you can't have baby butts, um, <laughs> oh. <showing. laughs> but luckily they had an editor anyway, so she just edited it, so it didn't look, so the piece doesn't look anything like the original, but okay. Which is a shame because everybody loves little baby hineys. Those little round little baby buns. Mm. <laughs> now I sound like a crazy person, but you know you love baby buns. People. I love baby feet too. Oh my gosh, I want to eat them. Like, I don't want to like actually bite them, but for some reason I want them in my mouth. So <laughs> weird. So baby weird. I'm the weirdest. I'm going to edit out all my weirdness. I mean, I'm going <laughs> to pinch and bite your baby. Oh, no. <laughs> No, don't. So spell it again. So spell your name, how people can find you on Facebook. Cause we're going to start there. Okay. Let me make sure I'm spelling it right real quick before I do that. <laughs> I, I can do the garlic part, right. But let me make sure I do the garlic part, right. Stupid. I'm so glad that you're hating the internet. <laughs> and then they spell Devony no E. Yeah, they, so my name is correctly spelled D-E-V-A-N-E-Y. They spell D-E-V-A-N-Y. Okay, so it's spelled, my Facebook is spelled G-A-R-L-I-C space G-A-R-L-I-C-I-A-N. And then you got that... And your profile picture, is that your paw? No, that is actually Jared, who I met. (laughs) Is that your boyfriend? (laughs) Oh, that's your rock star guy. Yeah, yeah, it's Jared. So that's your one boyfriend. He told me, or I told him I wouldn't change my profile picture, and I I kept my word. I just 
change it a little bit because I like I like to try to keep an aesthetic. <laughs> oh Lord, we need a complete overhaul. <laughs> it's time to start showcasing you as the artistic adult woman you are. I feels weird turning 20 this year. I'm like, I feel Girl, I just turned 41. You want to talk about weird? <laughs> I don't even know what's I got this bandana on because I brushed my hair weird and all of a sudden like this patch of gray showed up. <laughs> like, wrinkles? I'm about to start like wearing Lakota chokers just to hide the wrinkles. <laughs> 20. It's weird being 20. Girl. Well, it's it's like a it like emotionally and mentally it's strange because like at the same time emotionally I feel older, but then physically it's like a uh -huh. weird. And then the opposite, I feel young, yet TikTok, <laughs> I'm a big girl, you know. So for the record, it never stops being emotionally weird. <laughs> like, really, if you're waiting for things to be normal and stabilize, ain't happening. Life is weird. Keep on painting. I love it. But I want, I want our listeners to engage what you're doing. I want them to stalk you. I want them to politely... <laughs> comments and if they don't like something i would like them just to zip it and scroll on because if you're, if you're mean my friend i'm gonna come after you i'm very open to uh comments and stuff i always respond to people so if anyone ever wants to ask anything as well um i'm i'll easily respond except sometimes on instagram my direct messages are a little whack on there so i prefer if someone e emails me but they still can message me on Instagram. Comments, I can see fine. Direct messages are a little more, I Dark. don't know. My, <laughs> my Instagram's just buggy, glitchy, but people I'm just going to keep nodding like I know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's like the Facebook messenger of Instagram, but it sucks. So what do we call you as a person besides garlic galation like are you devony like madonna like you just don't have a last name <laughs> um devony's fine most okay. people call me dev i have a actually this is a funny subject i have a lot of nicknames it's ridiculous and it comes with being on instagram too long um my full name is devony ring royalty but we don't have to be formal uh <laughs> so a lot of people just call me devony dev I have some wacky nicknames. Some people call me 22 if they don't know my name. Some people call me by my characters. <laughs> some people call me love because of my username. <laughs> it's fun. I don't even know how we're going to find, I, I literally want to promote you, but I have no idea how anybody is going to find you. So we're going to get this It's fight. Facebook's fault. They <laughs> yeah, let's blame the man, man. Well, Devony royalty, I'm a fan for life. I look forward to what the next decades bring to you. And if you ever need anything, we got your back. Thank you. And I will let you know when I mail your birthday package. Oh, girl, I'm already planning stuff to mail you and it ain't your birthday. Oh, you I got, mail me, me. Like as we talk, I got this mental little package I'm packaging. She got <laughs> get this. I got it. <laughs> at that girl well thank you for spending time with us today and i can't tell that you have stage frightness you did you done great <laughs> thank you and thank you for having me it's, it's